Uh, welcome to Hollywood Balls with me, Jordy Pete Redding. Uh, pinch yourself time because I've only got a legend in the house. I've got two legends in the house. I've got my good friend Lee Clark, um, but I've also got a privilege and an honour to welcome. Um, what a what a career! From the moment he stepped out in that fur coat in Newcastle uh, to the moment he scored the hat trick against Newcastle, uh, it's only Faustino Aspria. <laughs> Able assisted tonight by Carlos. Uh, welcome. And uh, my uh, guest co host this evening, Lee Nash Clark. Uh, but it's a massive Hollywood Balls welcome. Tino, how are you? Uh, very well. Very well. Uh, hoy, muchas gracias por la invitación. Uh, muy contento de ver de nuevo a, a mi amigo Lee. Compartí un vestuario muy lindo en Newcastle con él. It's a privilege to be on the show. It's good to see his good old friend, Lee Clark. It was a privilege to play alongside him and to share the changing room with him in his Newcastle times. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some stories. I can see Lee smiling already. But I, I, what we do, uh, Carlos, just for Tino as well, is that uh, we take him back to the beginning of his career. Um, and I've, I've got to ask, I, I've been researching it big time this week. Uh, he scored 35 goals in 78 games, and he started out at uh, Atletico Nacional, right? Um, and then the Italian clubs came calling. Was there more than Parma that came for him? Also, que usted empezó en el Atlético Nacional y que metió 35 goles en 78 partidos, y después lo compró el Parma en Italia. Pero que sí hubo otros equipos italianos que estaban interesados en usted en ese entonces. Sí, yo, yo llegué a Parma fue de casualidad, porque en realidad cuando yo juego el preolímpico para Barcelona, el preolímpico para los Juegos Olímpicos, eh, cuando yo llego a Italia iba era para la Fiorentina. So Tino says that he, he, he ended up in Parma, but that was a, a bit random because he was meant to play for Fiorentina. Because okay. he got scouted in the Olympics in '92 in Barcelona. Wow, um, an amazing career, though. But it, I, I want to know from Tino how it came about that he moved to Newcastle. Uh, because was it was it through Kevin Keegan? Was who was looking at him from Newcastle before he came and joined Lee Clark? Que, que antes de usted venir acá a Newcastle, que quién fue que lo, lo convenció, que, o sea, cómo terminó llegando acá a Newcastle. No, todo lo hizo Keegan. Eh, yo estaba muy bien, estaba muy contento en Parma, pero cuando yo vi el amor con el que él hablaba y se refería hacia mí, y las ganas que él quería que yo fuera a jugar a, en, en Inglaterra, pues automáticamente dije que sí, no... Nunca dudé por el amor con el que él hablaba sobre mí, sobre la forma como me veían el, eh, jugando al fútbol. Entonces eso me convenció de que iba a ir, de que de salir de Parma para Newcastle. So it was Kevin Keegan who convinced him to come and play for Newcastle. It was the way that he, that Kevin Keegan used to speak about the club and okay. the love that Kevin Keegan had for the club. And Kevin Keegan said that he knows a style of play would fit in perfectly with the team that he had and that Tino would be loved in the city. So that was one of the reasons, the main reasons why Tino decided to, to take on the challenge. And he says it's one of the best choices he's made to come and play for Newcastle. Uh, coming into Lee, Lee, um, what, what was your, I mean, when, when Tino first arrived in that uh, fur coat and, 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 and all, the, all the finale, what, what, what was it, what, what did the players think when Tino arrived? Well, we knew we had a special player. We didn't realise how special he was. Uh, that first time we met him, just before the uh, pre-match meal down at Middlesbrough, and he was having a little glass of wine with his pre-match meal. And then he comes on the pitch and uh, sets up 
Steve Watson's winner with a magical piece of skill to create the goal. And from then, he we, we loved him. He was not just a superstar of a footballer. He was a superstar of a man. We He socialised with us. We had yep. many laughs together. Uh, he was a great <coughs> character. And um, we loved everything about him, both on and off the field. He fitted into what we were about at Newcastle with the players and the and the togetherness we had. So we, we, we loved everything about him. Um, I've got to say, uh, Carlos, I'm going to ask you to ask Tino. Um, many players come to Newcastle, um, play, go and leave. Some get it. Like, they understand the fans straight away. Uh, Tino got it straight away, didn't he? Que hay muchos jugadores que llegan acá al Newcastle Force y que juegan y se van, pero no, no entienden como lo que significa jugar para el Newcastle. Pero que usted como que apenas llegó, como que usted encajó perfectamente con, con la hinchada, con los jugadores, con el club. Es que cuando, cuando, yo, llego, cuando yo llego a Newcastle, eh, el, yo creo que... El, me di cuenta y Kevin Keegan me hizo entender de que la gente de Newcastle le gustan los jugadores que se entregan en la cancha. Que, que, y muchas veces yo podía ser muy talentoso, pero los mismos compañeros se dieron cuenta que cuando, cuando había que correr para recuperar la pelota, yo corría. ¿no? Yo era una persona que me entregué en la cancha por, por ese equipo, por ese club, por mis compañeros, por el amor de Kevin Keegan. Y creo que eso la, al final la gente termina reconociéndolo. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big difference when you come to a club like Newcastle and, um, you know, it's not just about, it's not like a job, it's not just playing football because he he felt in love with the club and the, the, the love for the teammates that even though he was an attacking player, he would run back to get the ball back and he would keep 110% for the club and he thinks that's what people, his teammates and the fans realize that even though he, he, he was a big name at the time. He was willing to give it 110% for the club, for the city, for the players. And that's one of the reasons he says he, he still comes back to Newcastle. He loves going out to have a drink and he loves still being able to see the fans and the people. And he still feels the love of, 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 of you know, of the city. Uh, Carlos, Lee, um, can I be there, Peter? Yeah, go, go on, Lee. Carlos can just pass a message on to team. <coughs> That's why we loved him. That's why he was so popular in the dressing room. He was a superstar player, as I said, but he was also a superstar person. He We had some very good times together on and off the field. We had many laughs and jokes. Um, tell him it was not always me that was cutting his clothes up. Sometimes it was Shearer. Uh, but uh, us Jodies, we love him. Also, que de todas formas eso es lo que él dijo, tipo que usted no era solo una superestrella de jugador, sino una superestrella de persona, que usted era una persona que se hizo querer mucho, que por eso le hacían tantas bromas y lo hicieron sentir como parte de la familia desde el principio, y que el de las bromas no siempre era él, sino que Alan Chira era el que le escondía la ropa. No, no, no los, los dos, él y Alan Chira eran los que todo el día me... Este era... He said, says that, you, Lee, that you used to play a lot of practical jokes on him in the changing rooms. <laughs> yes, I, we had good fun. We had good times. We had uh, good personalities together. And uh, Tino, he came in and he fitted into this dressing room straight away. And as I said, was very, very popular. That, that was my next question for you, Lee. Um, as, as a player who was in the squad and a, a pivotal player in that team, um, when a new player comes in, it, it must be difficult for them, and, and, and especially for Tino, because he's coming in from a completely different perspective. Uh, he obviously, he just fitted straight into training and, and, and the games, didn't he? Absolutely. That's a credit to what he was about. I mean, obviously, we talk about first impressions with him. Uh, that, that day at Middlesbrough, when he made the goal for, for Steve Watson, uh, after coming on as a substitute and that 20, 30 minute cameo he gave was just an example of what's going to be happening and what was going to be coming up. So, but then also, once we got to know him better inside the dressing room um, and inside the club, 
what a what a terrific personality he was. He just as I said, we had a great bunch of lads there. We got on really well together and we loved the laugh and the joke, but mm. we knew when to be serious and Tino fitted that so much. Um, Carlos, I think Tito, maybe Tito's gone off to make a, a, a cup of tea. Hopefully, he's coming back in. But Lee, it, you know, I just check on Tito. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll chat with Lee. It was a phenomenal player that came in, um, and for, for Kevin Keegan to spot him uh, because it, it, it wasn't a player that was on any Newcastle fans' radar, was it? Well, it was just a. An example of the master strokes Kevin was pulling off with signings at that time. Mm. Me and you have talked about this before. That yep. his recruitment was phenomenal, really. He didn't really get any any wrong, if any. And we, that's the key thing when you're, when you're bringing players in. And the players he brought in made sure the rest of us that were there had up our game, both on the training pitch and in, on a match. Ultimately, the performance of the... There's the group, both on the training pitch and uh, on a match day, you know, got really strong. A uh, bit of an enig- enigma, wasn't he? <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, there, there was the examples of the Barcelona evening. Yeah. And then there was other times where he frustrated us and, and the management. But he's such a likeable lad. Mm. You know, we, we, we tried to give him every help. And listen, he, it was brilliant how he bought into the city. He's already said that. He, he comes back and he's treated like uh, a god, and rightly so, because he bought into the, not just the um, the football club, but he bought into the, the supporters. He bought into what they were about, that they'd want to have a party all the time. He was a superstar. So whenever he went out socialising to a to a, a pub, a wine bar, a nightclub, a shop, they wanted to speak to him, and he uh, bought into that, and, and the fans Every, loved that about him. Everyone that one would uh, speak to Tino. Um, I've got to say this, or I'll get if I, if I don't, Lee. It's our Max actually, and she makes a really good point. Carlos, if you can tell Tino that my sister says it's brilliant to see two of my favourite players. She always used to say that Tino used to have an elastic band between his foot and the ball. How did he do it? Also, <laughs> que la, la hermana del, del señor dice que es un placer tener dos leyendas del fútbol ahí en, en la cámara, pero que usted parecía que tuviera un caucho o una goma entre la pierna y el balón, que pareciera que estuviera el balón pegado a sus pies. ¿Cómo lo hacía? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, eh, primero dígale que se, no sé, se apagó el teléfono, se me apagó, eh, no sé por qué. This, first of all, he, uh, sorry that he went offline, but his phone went off. No problem. Eh, y segundo, no, que, que eso fue desde de niño, creo, desde niño, eh, era, siempre fui muy habilidoso con el, con el balón, creo que eso fue la gran virtud mía al jugar al fútbol. Eh, y por eso eh, tuve la suerte de estar en tantos equipos importantes por la por la habilidad que tenía con la pelota y la forma extraña de correr. He says that that was one of his biggest attributes to football that um, he um, from a very young age he used to dominate the ball very well and um, he says that it was that and the, the funny way that he runs that. <laughs> can I ask a question? Of course you can. I, Carlos, can you ask Tino what he thinks of uh, the modern day Newcastle now and uh, what he thinks needs to be improved? Uh, what his thoughts are on the club um, and, you know, would he ever think about coming back in a, in a capacity to be uh, either on the coaching staff or as an ambassador of the football club? Fausto, ¿qué usted qué piensa del Newcastle actual, del equipo, del club? ¿Qué es su opinión? Y que si en el futuro le gustaría venir a trabajar al Newcastle como de pronto entrenador o como un embajador para el equipo? 
pa, yo creo que eh, hoy en día no, no le dan la lo, el dueño no le da la importancia que tiene Newcastle eh, a nivel de Premier League, es uno de los equipos más importantes y Newcastle de, de, debería eh, regresar a a tener esos grandes jugadores que siempre tuvo, o tuvo en los años 90, que luchaban eh, por la Premier League. Es, 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 sí, es lo, que la gente, y, lo que la gente y los hinchas desearían. Todos desearíamos que Newcastle volviera a estar ahí en los primeros puestos, jugando Champions siempre y peleando la Premier League. He, he thinks that the, 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 the club directors, the owners of the, of the club, don't give Newcastle United the importance of what it means to the city and to the people. Uh, it's become a, quite a mediocre team. Um, it's not like in the 90s when Newcastle was fighting to win the Premier League. They were in the Champions League. They had the biggest names were in part of the team. Newcastle needs to get some, you know, like good names back in the as a football team it's what is what the fans want to see and it's also what him as an ex footballer of Newcastle would love to see the team to be performing at at a high level uh, fighting to win a Premier League fighting to be in the Champions League but not fighting for survival it's it's quite sad to see the team that gets you know that the, their fans are happy just because they survived and didn't get relegated that that's it's a big shame It's shameful for the city and for the players, and especially uh, yes. for the fans. I, I, I totally agree. Like, yeah, we. This is what a lot of us are seeing. Um, you know, ex-players and fans of the club that the club has no ambition anymore. It just wants to finish fourth bottom in the table, and uh, they, they don't want to fight for for the for the big titles. They don't want to push the big teams. So, but Carlos, would he? Would he like to come back to the football club one day in a capacity or as a coach or, as I said, as uh, ambassadorial role well, to, 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 to push across the project? Sí, a mí sí. Para mí sería un honor regresar a... Oh, estar involucrado en un proyecto. Sí, me gustaría. Me sería un honor poder ayudar. Siempre que yo pueda ayudar con mi experiencia que Newcastle sea un equipo top de los grandes de, de, de Europa sería siempre un honor he, would, he says that he would be honored to come back to the city and to be in any role for Newcastle with his experience to be able to give the club something back to help them to you know to, to get back into into a better performance and to be able to get them to perform to to where everybody wants to see them Because, uh, like yes. he said, it's quite painful to see them just fighting for survival at the moment. I'm going to take him away from football a moment because uh, a famous, a famous squad, not just for win winning, you know, games and and being the entertainers. A big important question is: Did he prefer Julie's nightclub or Legends? <laughs> it's a preferred, uh, Julie's or Legends? Las dos. Las dos. He says, what, uh, one before the other. <laughs> one before the other. Absolutely brilliant. Um, we, all, we all know about the Barcelona game. Absolutely fantastic. It's, it's Tino's, uh, everyone talks about it. It's still, it's on YouTube. It's had multi, multi millions of views. But my favorite game, uh, just for pure Um, Tino was Manchester City away and I know Lee you played in that game as well the 3-3 uh, and Keith him and Keith Curl ask him Carlos him and Keith Curl went at it What I mean that was just such an amazing game que el, el partido favorito de él fue el del Manchester City cuando usted peleó con Keith Kell que estaban peleando por posesión <laughs> <risa> ese, ese partido es más recordado por el codazo que le pegó al defensor. He eh, says uh, that, that game is more remembered because of the elbow that Tino Kiff 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 in the face. Than... <risa> I was thinking about what he, no, tell, uh, Carlos. I was thinking about what he bent down and, and 
gave him, gave him gave him the head. That that was my favourite bit, not his goal or or Philippe Albert's goals. It was the way he dealt with Keith Curl. All the two fans <laughs> loved that day. Que los fans vienen y que les recuerda mucho cuando usted le pegó al otro. Sí, yo no estaba muy nuevo en la Premier, no no sabía que ya tenían tantas cámaras y cuando me llevan a juicio, porque cuando voy a un juicio que que siga me lleva y tengo cinco abogados para que me defiendan, para que no me metan a la cárcel, yo eh, nunca en mi vida me había asustado tanto, que podían meter a un futbolista por hacer una jugada en la cancha a la cárcel, yo desde ahí cambié mi expectativa y mi forma de jugar, nunca más le volví a pegar a nadie. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go to court because of the incident and wow. that the club provided him with, with five solicitors and that at one point he thought that he was actually going to go to jail <laughs> and he said that from that moment on he decided to change the way he played wow. I think wow. uh, I think I think this was a game where the Newcastle fans seen that Tino was not just a fantastic footballer they seen that he was a warrior he was a fighter he would fight Committed. for the badge Yes, um, dice, el, this... dice el link que, sorry, dice el link que eh, en ese partido fue que se dieron cuenta los fans de Newcastle que usted no solo era un buen jugador, sino que era un guerrero y estaba dispuesto a, a pelear por la camiseta. No, es que fue, me tenía fastidiado ese jugador porque todo el tiempo me agarró, todo el tiempo me pegó y me, me insultaba y bueno, en una me quité y me tocó que reaccionar, pero normalmente no era ese, no, ese no era mi estilo de, de pegar codazos y ese mi estilo era otro, de, de jugar bien al fútbol y hacer jugar bien a mis compañeros. Ahí fue un momento de que me salí de las de casillas. He, he, that, that, that day was because he, he, was, he was getting sick of his, he was getting his uh, t-shirt pulled, he was mm. getting kicked. He was yeah. being rude. He was kicking him all over. So he says, he, he, he had to react because uh, he had enough. But it, it, he wasn't normally like that. You know, he, it wasn't his normal style of playing. No, no, it wasn't. Um, I have to say, just just a quick. We're getting so many messages in um, for Tino, but I've got to say a very quick hi uh, to Tony Manuel in the Philippines, um, and also listen to this, Lee. This is amazing. There's a guy called Joe Campbell who's watching uh, in Thailand. He's 84 years old, uh, loves the tune. Um, he used to drive the 138 bus from Wickham to Wrighton uh, back in the day in 1966, and he's watching the show today. So um, if, if it's coming home, Joe Campbell's bringing it home, isn't he? Oh, that's a great, that's a great link, definitely, to what's going <laughs> on with the Euros at the moment. 1966, brilliant. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, Carlos, I, I just want to ask because I, I, I want to ask uh, Tino. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the best for last, but it's got to be Barcelona. It was was that his greatest game in a black and white shirt? It was for many, many fans, but does Tino feel that as well? Fausto, que sí. El fue el partido de Barcelona fue el mejor partido suyo de, del Newcastle en la camiseta de negro, blanco y negro. Es pues que la gente me de pronto por ahí jugué unos partidos también igual de importantes pero que no marqué tres goles eh, creo que la diferencia la hacen los goles pero he pues, says that it, it was a good game and an important game but I think a lot of people remember that game because of the hat trick yeah but he feels that there was a lot of games that were as important but obviously they get overshadowed by the fact that the you know he got the hat trick against um, Barcelona. Ask him about Mets with the corner flag. Que el partido de Mets cuando levantó el palo de la de la esquina. Sí, ese es un partido. <laughs> no, yo ya tenía esa esa celebración eh, programada y si hago gol, pero no sé si Liz se recuerda cuando que que diez minutos antes eh, Kevin Keegan me iba a sacar, que iba a salir. 
antes, cuando estábamos 0 a 0. Pero yo no, yo no salgo porque se lesiona David Ginola y cambian a Ginola y ahí es donde yo hago los dos goles. Um, Lee, he's asking you if, if you remember that on that game, um, Keith was, um, Kevin Keegan was going to take Tino out, but he didn't yes. because Ginola got injured. Yes, I remember so this. Said, yes. So he says <laughs> when he scored the goal, was uh, like a, a matter of a metaphor to show that he needed to be on the pitch and <laughs> his Newcastle top meant everything to him and he, you know like it should be higher because he, he, he like to reach the sky because that's how much the team meant to him yes i this was perfect because Tino he always reacted in a positive way with and uh, this time in this game you remember the situation with Ginola having to come off with an injury and Tino was expecting to come off. So when he scored, he was very happy, but he wanted to show the manager, Keegan, that keep me on the pitch. I can do magical things. I heard that that was to show Keegan that you need to play because you did magic. Pero yo, yo le quiero hacer una pregunta a Lee, claro. ¿Por, por, qué, ¿Por qué él y, y, y Alan siempre me hacían todas las bromas a mí? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué a mí? ¿Por qué no me dejaban dormir? ¿Por qué casi me sacan un ojo? ¿Por qué me rompían los why, zapatos? Why did you and Alan always pick on him? Because he said, can you remember when you were young? Can you remember when you and Alan were He's asking about when Ginelli blew his eye out with Allen with the <laughs> uh, fire extinguisher. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes we, we, we take our fun a bit too far with the fire extinguisher that day. We could have we could have finished him off for the season. We we first started with cutting his clothes up, but then we wanted to go a bit further and uh, we nearly hurt him badly, but it was always in good fun telling. <laughs> Que eso es broma de todas formas, esa vez que saqué la del ojo casi se sale de manos, pero que nunca fue nada como a propósito, sino era como por divertirse. Sí, pero siempre yo. Uh, why me? Why me? And, 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 and Carlos, and Carlos, you can tell him I done this, because whenever we went into town for a beer, I always had to buy his beers. He never buy me a beer. <risa> siempre que salían ese man les compraba las cervezas a usted que usted nunca compraba nada <risa> eran, eran lindos tiempos muy lindos fue una fue un equipo muy unido muy, muy lindo la, la unión que tenía ese equipo era fantástico He says it was a great union that you had, a great bond with all the teams, the, the teammates, and and the club, and it was all in good, you know, good memories. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Uh, absolutely brilliant memories, Br brilliant memories for for, for fans uh, like myself uh, who were lucky enough to go into Julie's uh, and see the likes of uh, Lee Clark and Tino. Uh, Tino was the biggest draw. So, uh, listen, guys, it's been a fantastic show. Just want to thank Tino so much, and of course you, Lee, uh, and Carlos for being in there and um, uh, put putting the Geordie in for us. Uh, so that all that leaves me to say is, I can only end it one way: Tino, Tino. Que gracias por todo, Fausto. Que gracias por la entrevista y que lo esperan en Dubai pronto. Sí, sí. Muchas gracias. Un placer, pues. Que me tengan en cuenta pues para esta entrevista a dictar que, que lo quiero mucho que, que a pesar de que pues, nunca tuve la posibilidad de entender el inglés cuando llegué a Newcastle porque el profesor no quiso pero que si sí era el tipo eh, que mantenía el equipo unido con todas su, sus chistes y era el tipo más divertido del equipo que eso fue muy importante para Newcastle y muchas gracias por todo He says, thank you very much for the invitation. It's, you know, it's an honor to still feel part of Newcastle and to be considered important for these interviews. And he says to Lee that even though he never spoke good English when he was in the team, that he could see and he remembers that 
you were a key man in the changing rooms that you used to do the joke, you used to make people laugh and that you kept the team together. And he says, thank you for that because, you know, he's got really good memories of, of you guys and especially of you, Lee, being a bit of a, you know, being the silly one and making people laugh <laughs> and, you know, making time go, you know, making every day, you know, more pleasant. Tell him it's great to see the legend again and we keep in touch. Pues ok, es un placer ver la leyenda otra vez y que sigan en contacto. Ok, thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Take care. No problem. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.